Good morning, LifeGate. Would you stand with me? As I've uh, been doing a, a Thanksgiving devotional this month, I was reminded that this is our first Sunday together in November, because last year, week it was the end of October. And I really felt like the Lord laid this psalm upon my heart. And I want us to open with it today as we enter into a time of prayer. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful shout to the Lord all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is good. He is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Lord, we thank you this morning that we can come here with thanksgiving. Lord, this month is the traditional month. We talk about having an attitude of gratitude, giving thanks to you. But Lord, it shouldn't just be in November. It should be every day that we would come in and bring our praises unto the Most High, who has given us life, who's given us breath, who's given us the ability to gather together. Lord, there's so many things you do for us every day. And I pray that this would be a, a jumping off point for us. Lord, our word this year is intentional. That intentional every day I would get up my brothers and sisters would get up and they would say thank you Lord and begin to list the reasons why they're grateful for what you've done so Lord we thank you in advance for what you're gonna do in our service today and we praise you and everybody said amen praise you Jesus Darkness shaking, faith is rising. We know, we know, we know. Heartbeat racing, living. 
feel them this morning. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. forgiven 
accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggar, now we're royalty. We were the prisoner, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Count on your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout on your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Shout on your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out. One more time. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out. God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Start off with the, the bridge here. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. Here all we want. Here all we want, Holy Spirit, come rest on us. Here all we want, here all we want, everyone together. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. Here all we want, here all we want. Praise you, Jesus. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. When you move, you make my heart When you feel the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me Praise you, Jesus Holy Spirit Hallelujah As the Spirit As the Spirit was moving Over the water Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving, holy the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the 
heaven on in Come rest on us Come rest on us Fire and wind Come and do it again Open up the gates Heaven on in Come rest on us Come rest on us Come down Spirit when you move You make my heart When you move the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm near and I know you Come down Spirit when you move You make my heart When you move the room Rest on us Hear all we want Hear all we want Holy Spirit Come rest on us Hear all we want Hear all we want Holy Spirit Come rest on us Sing it with your heart. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. Oh. Spirit, come rest on us. Father, we thank you that we get to come here today into your presence and worship you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And God, this morning we just invite the Holy Spirit to come and be in this place to rest on us as we worship, as we praise, as we receive the word, God, as we give. We thank you, Father, that we get to come into this place as a community and seek you and just sit with one another and worship you and reflect on all that you are, all that you've done, and we continue to just ask you to come, God. Come into the homes of our church, Jesus. Come into our neighborhood, come into our city as we prepare for what's to come in our outreach in the next couple weeks. God, we ask you and we invite you to come. Come onto our property and just invade this city with your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for what you're doing in this place and we thank you for this time together. In your name, amen. Well, good morning, it's good to see you all. Welcome. I know we have um, a few guests in the room, so if you're with us today for the first time, we just want to thank you for being here. And if you didn't get a Connect card, you can slip up your hand. Our ushers will get you one. 
Uh, we just want to welcome you. Our pastors want to be able to follow up with you, pray for you. So thank you for being here. Uh, we have a few announcements this morning, things that are coming up. First, two weeks, less than two weeks, November 18th, we have Fall Fest here on the property. It's our community outreach where we just get to love our neighbors in very tangible, easy ways. We feed them. We have haircuts for kids. We give new jackets to kids. We do face painting, jumpers, um, all kinds of things. And we're getting some stuff donated from some other churches that have had events that couldn't use it all. We'll have clothing to give away. And so we just invite you to come out for that. If you would like to partner in that, the one thing we are asking for donations is Shasta Soda. And so if you'd like to donate cases of Shasta, please start bringing those. We are two weeks away, so we know what to go buy. Uh, food is all provided. We don't charge anything. Um, this week, pastor went out, uh, pastors went out, and we put more flyers up. We put them in businesses. And so we typically have around 300 to 450 people come through for Fall Fest. So we need you. We need our bodies here uh, to love people, to greet people, to pray for people, and just to be present. And then obviously to serve and to set up and tear down. So if you can do that, there's a sign-up sheet out on the porch. It may look really full. There's a new page. We can't have too many volunteers. Kids can help. Youth can help. So we would love to have you all here with us that day. It starts at 11 a.m., but setup will be 8 a.m. So especially men, we set up a lot of pop-ups, a lot of tables and chairs um, for our, our vendors that are coming in um, to serve and give things out. We've got Raising Canes coming. We've got our public safety department coming. We have Olive Crest, which is uh, temporary housing for children um, when, like, single parents um, need to go to the doctor, have surgery. It's a very temporary foster care system, and they're going to come out, and that's something we can partner with them in, but they're also going to offer services to families in our community. So we're so looking forward to that. Ushers, you can go ahead and come down as we prepare to give. Uh, ladies, December 2nd is our annual women's gathering here at the church. We don't have tickets for sale yet, but just so you can plan ahead, December 2nd, 11 a.m., invite all your girlfriends. It's a lot of fun. Um, tickets are going to be $30, and those will hopefully be on sale by next week, but just plan, save the date, invite whoever you want. They don't have to come to our church. It's just a fun way to gather heading into the Christmas season together, and so we're, very, um, we're looking forward to that time, and men, you've got Zoom calls coming up. You can check those dates on the slides and your emails. And then as Thanksgiving approaches, just watch your emails um, to see what's going to be coming up around that time as well. But we're just uh, excited for all God is going to do as we wrap up 2023 and head into 2024. So let's prepare our hearts to give, and we're going to pray this morning. Father, we thank you that we get to give. We thank you that you are our constant provider, Jesus. And we thank you for every good gift that is from you. And this morning, we give back with grateful hearts. We give back with joy not expecting anything in return, Father, but just giving back to you out of all that you have given us. So we thank you for this opportunity this morning. In your name, amen. I'm going to ask that uh, we stand up and just praise him one more time. How many of you uh, know that God is the same today as he was yesterday as he is forever. Amen? We're going to be calling on him today. I'm calling on the God of Jacob whose love endures to generation. I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses the one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same thing for me Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. 
things and a lot of people in this world that we can't depend on. You can't even always depend. You go to Costco or Sam's Club, you can't be dependent that they're going to have the same thing that they had the week before. You go to your favorite grocery store, whatever. You, you, you know, you go to various places and you find out that 
you know, things aren't just what you thought they would be. You talk to friends and they're faithful to you one week and not another. They'll say one thing one week to somebody and they'll say another thing to somebody else and well, I guess we call them friends. Um, th- you know, we have things like that that do take place. And I know that, you know, we're, we're human and we do make mistakes and we give each other leniency and aren't you glad that God to- taught us to forgive? Amen. And that's wonderful. And God is faithful to forgive us but he's also faithful to every single one of his promises. There's not one promise that he's not faithful to. He'll always come through. We sing songs like this. Oh God, I need you now. I'm standing on your faithfulness. Wow. That's something that we can always be dependent upon. That God isn't going to let us down. He's going to come through. That when we pray, He hears us. That He's going to do the amazing things that we don't even know how they're going to end up, but God said He'll come through for us. And He tells us that in so many ways, and He's demonstrated that in so many ways. You have testimonies that have happened right here, right around us. And we've heard those things this morning about how good God is. We had in our time of prayer this morning, people just get up to the microphones and pray and from 9.30 to 10 o'clock and just praying and seeking God's face on your behalf, on behalf of our service, on behalf of our community and our world. And God is faithful. Even though we look around the world, we see so much disaster, so much uh, upheaval and unrest. And yet we can rest in God's presence. And we can rest in his faithfulness to know that God will always come through. You've prayed. You've sought the Lord. And as the psalmist said, and he heard me out of his holy hill. He heard me. He hears you. He hears you. Every single prayer. We talked about that last week with Cornelius, that he heard his prayers go up as a, I'll say it this way, as a sweet smelling savor to the Lord, as a, as a wonderful aroma. He feared God. That wasn't his normal, that was of a different culture. But he didn't want to remain in the same culture that he was, he wanted to put on the culture of God. And then he came to know the culture of Jesus. And then he came to know the empowering of God's Holy Spirit. Wow. And that's just because God is faithful and if anybody reaches out to him, that he'll hear them. If anybody calls upon his name, he will do that. He'll hear, he'll answer, and he'll give to you the things that you have need of. And he'll walk you through the tough times of life. Doesn't mean we're going to get off scot-free as far as, oh, we'll never have a problem in life, never have any tribulations. No, it's promised to us. And that's what builds, us, builds our character. Tribulation worketh patience, patience, endurance, endurance, hope. There's something that continues to happen to build us up as we go through different things in life, but God promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Oh God, oh God, I need you. How I need you now. Come on, sing it out. Rock, oh, rock of ages. Sing, Richard. Oh God, oh God, I need you. Oh God, oh God, I need you now. How I need you now. Just worship Jesus. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. 
faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, Hallelujah. I need you. Lord, we praise now. and worship your holy name. How I need you. How great now. you are. Lord, thank you. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. We put out in the text, if anybody had a testimony and you'd like to share that, I'd like you to come real quickly and we'll share that. We'll have you share that this morning. Five, four, three, somebody. Okay. Yeah. I'll come down here, Yvette. If somebody else has a testimony, please come so we can share that. This past weekend, I mean, not this past weekend, this past week, I went through the most horrific thing in life that I've ever had to go through. I almost died because of a, a narcotic. I, they were not sure if I was going to be here today. I am living proof that God is real. Because your prayers and the prayers around the uh, around my neighborhood and the people who prayed over me, I am here today, and I am no longer going to touch morphine or any narcotic medication again. You do that. Let's stretch out our hands towards Yvette. Let's pray for Jesus. You know the struggles that she's had ever, even when she was in the womb. Come through alcohol fetal syndrome as an unborn baby. And then as she was born. Gone on through various difficulties in life. Lord, she's still here. Unexpectedly. But she's still alive. And she's still here. And she still loves you. She was taught when she was just a young girl in this church how to walk with Jesus. And Lord, she's still moving forward and trying to do her best to serve you and to walk with you. So Lord, we thank you that you will continually keep your hand upon Yvette and her husband, Dinesh. And God, there would just be a, just a continued outpouring of your spirit upon her. Keep her safe, keep her well, give her, give her a strong mind to be able to understand the things that go on around her and the things that she is to participate in and not. And so, God, we thank you for your goodness, your graciousness, your love, and your faithfulness to Yvette. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of our little sister. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you, sweetheart. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else who wanted to share this morning? Well, if not, then I'm going to invite somebody up here to the platform and, 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 uh, and spend a time talking with you. This is Liz Horn. Give her a big hand as she comes up. This is a um, wonderful woman of God. Come on up with me. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. And Liz is a strong history and the Foursquare family and parents and people that we dearly love, but God has given her and her husband a wonderful ministry, and, and I'm just so proud of them, and I want you to hear about it this morning. 
because it's something that we don't typically look at, something that we don't uh, typically, you know, go after in, in great ways. Um, although I did have a pastor that was one time in my division that ministered to that community. And, uh, but I'm so glad you're here to share that with us. She's a graduate of, of Life Pacific University. And along with my daughter and others of you that are in the here and um, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly. Callie, 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 and uh, yeah, it's just great to have these um, young women of God here, amen, and that uh, preach the gospel, and, uh, and in fact, we're going to get into that a little bit, maybe, if our time uh, goes on, just because of <laughs> what God does. No, it's okay. You take all the time you want. If you preach this morning, you just go right ahead and preach. I told you you could do that, or I told Carly you could do that, and so uh, you just share with us your heart, all right. but uh, give it to us, okay? okay here we well, go. Thanks for having me, Life Kate. Um, I am, Carly's one of my best friends from college, so I have a, even though I never attended here, it's still in my heart, um, and my sister-in-law is coming here now. She lives down here, um, Becky, and then um, just the Jamesons really supported my sister and I when we were down here just as like an extended family, so we're very grateful for your guys' community and for having us here, so thanks. Um, I come from Washington State, two states up, if you're not aware. Um, <laughs> uh, we, my husband and I, uh, Luis, we went to life and we met there. He's from Anaheim and I grew up in Washington, but we have four kids. Um, I have a slideshow of uh, our pictures up there. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we have four kids, Zoe, Mateo, Nathaniel, and Alexander, and um, Alexander's with me today, but my husband's at home with our other three, so he's, um, what? He's watching the other kids, yeah. Um, I got a break. <laughs> but he, uh, he teaches high school, and then I stay home and um, homeschool our kids, but we also are FMI workers to the Yakima Nation, um, which is a Native American reservation in Washington State, South Central, um, and I have... Up. Yeah, so it's a pretty large reservation. I think it's around a million square miles or something like that. Um, but it's fairly large. This is um, the mountain that we get to look at every day, Mount Adams, and that half of it is actually owned by the tribe. This is the cultural center that is right near our house and just a photo of um, some Yakima people um, back in the day. And they're a beautiful community of people and... Um, November is Native American Heritage Month, so we get to celebrate and honor um, the First Nations that were here before us. And, and our heart as workers on this reservation is to truly honor their culture and who God made them to be. So um, there's a really uh, complicated relationship between Native Americans and Christians and the U.S. government. And so it's, it's really not a pretty situation to be in. And when God called us to go to the Native community, we weren't sure where he was going to put us. And so we just sat with it for a couple years of um, maybe like a year and a half to two years. We just sat and, and let God marinate in our hearts, like, where are you sending us? And it ended up being the Yakima Reservation. And so the past two and a half years, we've just been there getting to know the people and the culture, and it's a really beautiful community, and um, they, they believe in a God, they believe in creator, and I truly believe that God's placed in their hearts a knowledge of him, and you can see it in their histories and their, in their lores, you can see them crying out for God. Um, and unfortunately, what's happened in the history in the United States is very damaging, um, both for the Native communities and also for God's name within those communities. Because what happened was, you know, the, we, the, the colonizers came in and the Christians came in and they saw this different community of people that looked and worshiped differently than they did. They spoke different languages, um, and and they said that, you know, unless you look like us, you can't believe, like you're not a believer. 
And so they tried to strip away their culture and their language and they ripped families apart and separated three-year-old children from their families and sent them to uh, reser um, I'm blanking on the word, uh, residential schools and um, boarding schools. And it really destroyed the family in these communities. And we see the ramifications of it still to this day because, I mean, the, the last boarding school closed around 50 years ago. So this is not a, a, a far removed history, but these families never had parents, their language was ripped away from them, and so it trickles down. And today we see um, such heartbreak and um, devastation in the communities, but it's not lost because Jesus wants to come and redeem them. And he wants to redeem their culture and give them back what he gave them so that they can worship God in how he created them to worship him. And so what we're there for as FMI workers is to go in and find those believers there and help them um, to help them just really walk and figure out what it means to be a Native American Christian and plant a church in their community and reach their community and then go and send other missionaries and other workers to other reservations and even beyond to the rest of the world. And so um, roughly 0.4% of Native Americans living on reservations in the entire in the entire United States have a relationship with Jesus. So in our context, that means that there's around 43 believers in our context. We have a, uh, an enrolled membership of 10,000 people, and that's not a lot. And so it's very ripe for ministry, and it's very challenging. We have um, really hard my husband works as a teacher on the reservation. He's way far out. It's called White Swan High School, and he teaches out there, and he sees firsthand some of the challenges that they face in our community, including one in three children being homeless. Um, suicide rates are three times the national average for teens. Um, it's, the drug use is two times higher in teens. and. An astonishing four out of five women will experience or have experienced violence in their life. And it is heartbreaking, and we just know that Jesus wants to reach them and touch them. And so we said yes, and we need um, as many partners as we can have in prayer. It's a very spiritual community, and, and we've been... My husband's been like cursed. I mean, they tried to curse him, that didn't work, obviously. <laughs> but you know, at school, they sent bad medicine. We've had um, just feelings of like heaviness on the reservation. And so we need prayer partners. And that's um, why we go around speaking and meeting with friends and stuff, because we need people to commit to praying for us daily. And, um, because we can't do this alone. It's not, we might be there physically, but we're all as a body of Christ responsible for going and making disciples of the nations. And so if, if God's putting on your heart that, to pray for us, um, I will be here after service and I have a flyer that I can give you, but we have a newsletter that you can sign up for that I send out prayer requests um, and updates on what we're doing. And then also um, if he's feeling led leading you to give, then we, obviously this costs money. And as we progress in the years, um, we hope to do a lot. And so um, we need prayer and, and, and financial partners. So we are just grateful um, just for everyone's welcomeness and all of that. So, yeah. So we're, <laughs> we just said yes. So say yes. <laughs> And of course, um, your ministry is through the through Foursquare, yes, yep. and so all the giving can go through Foursquare, and and we can uh, give that way as well. And so, we're, in fact, we're going to do that this morning. We're going to collectively receive an offering for you and your ministry, and um, 
and we will make sure all of that gets in there and gets it to you and the way we do with others. And, and we're blessed to hear these things. These, you know, we're blessed to hear these things, but I, I say that kind of tongue in cheek because when you read these statistics and things that are there, it really saddens our hearts. And, and it is something that we don't think about often. It is a, a, a people group that's right here in our own nation. We think of the unchurched people all around the world, but we don't think about those that are right here in our own homeland. And, um, and so, uh, um, like I said, I have a pastor friend who ministered to, to some, but uh, not in the way that you are. And this is just a um, tremendous honor to have you here to share with us. Um, like I said, her, her family is, is steeped in Foursquare Missions, her father, uh, Jeff uh, Roper, um, I haven't, we had him speak once a long time ago, but what's that? We were, oh, you like were still in college, years yeah. Ago. <laughs> that's been a, that's been a while. And, uh, but Jeff is very strong within our, our district. Uh, it's one of the things that we as our district are really um, uh, praying for and giving towards. And he's over the whole uh, Minica area, which is... Uh, Middle East, North Africa, Central Asia, and that's his department. And Europe. <laughs> that's uh, and Europe now, yeah, <laughs> and Europe. Forgot there's another E on the end of that, but they haven't added that E to the to the um, yeah. And so, um, but this is just a huge undertaking, and this is you know we're you know she comes through this. This has been their hearts for years and years, and and I'm so glad that that that's continuing through you and as uh, your family and with your husband. That, uh, um, but we want to pray and we want to seek God on behalf. I mean, I'm glad they put those things up again so you continue to read those. If you couldn't read those, are those, those are, I guess those stats, are they on something as well? Um, I can give them to you. I didn't. Okay. We didn't, but Carly has Give them to Carly and, yeah. and we'll make sure that those things get sent out to you as well. It just helps you pray. When you have things like that, it'll help you pray for specifics, and it's good to be specific in our prayers, and we will add that into what we do on Sunday mornings between 9.30 and, and uh, 10 o'clock, and we will be praying for, for, the, uh, for the reservations, the Native Americans in specific as well, and add them in, into that, and of course, be praying for you and, uh, and your dear husband and your family. Um, just think of her children are seeing all of this firsthand and growing up in this kind of way to see what's happening and you know going to church and not in a little cozy environment like we're having today but it's a it's a struggle and but it's such a huge mission field that needs breakthrough and let's pray will you stand with me as we do that and you can begin to prepare your gifts as well and we will Receive those in just a moment. Lord, I thank you for the Horn family. I thank you, Lord, for their heart to share the gospel with people who believe in God, but they don't know the one true living God. But Lord, we're believing that they are coming. 43 out of 10,000, that's not a huge amount. But Lord, you started with 12 And Lord, we saw what you have done all around the world. And so as you're developing these 43, may it turn into 86 and may that 86, uh, God, just keep on growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So Lord Jesus, we pray that exponential things will happen. We will see people being touched by your spirit. We'll see miracles take place. And that, God, as they lay hands on sick, they will recover. And, and, Lord, the things that go on and their medicine men and the various things like that, that they will see a huge breakthrough when they call upon the name of Jesus. They will see that God does something amazing. And so, Lord, we're believing that you will do these things. Give them wisdom. Give them a protection. Keep their children well and safe. And may their children even be a great testimony to the, those that are that they're ministering to and they would see the faith of these young children growing in God and know how dedicated they are Jesus uh, keep them well keep them safe and Lord Jesus may we see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people come to know who you are through the ministry of the Horn family right there in Yakima 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and thanks. Amen. 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 And ushers, just go right ahead, and if you would give your, your gifts, that would be wonderful. Back when I was young, I had a girlfriend who was from Yakima. <laughs> Didn't know where that was, but I did did pronounce it, but I didn't know anything about it. But Liz, you enlightened me today. All right. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. We're also going to receive communion today, so we'll see how far we get today. But Acts chapter 10, we're going to be there. And man, haven't we had a great morning already? Amen, of worship, and thank you, worship team. Give the worship team a big hand. Would you do that? Good to have Richard back as well, and as he led this morning, that's wonderful, and uh, have the, the team there, really appreciate that. And, um, and Liz, thank you again for sharing with us. We really appreciate that, and your ministry, and your little baby there, and all of the different things. Yeah, so cute. So you can see the baby on the way out. And uh, yeah, this group of uh, young ladies, powerful people for Jesus. And, uh, you know, they, they went through Baba College together and they have remained friends. Two of them left this morning. Carly had five, at your, five of you at your house, right? Six of you at, at the house, staying right here overnight and, uh, and over the last two nights. And we are just... Um, uh, you know, um, all I can say is I knew that they were there, and uh, they had a great time, I'm sure. They always do when they get together. They have remained best of friends over these years, even though they're scattered all over the place sometimes, but yet they find times to get together, and, you know, when somebody's going to show up somewhere that's kind of really out of the area, they find a way to get themselves together and, um, and do that. It, that's marvelous. It keeps that, those relationships going and strong. And now, of course, they've, a lot of them have families and things, and, and some not yet, but anyway, they, some of them have families and kids and all of that, but they, they, that just becomes part of them and an extension of, of, uh, of their friendship. And so that's really great. So again, Liz, thank you. Um, that's an ongoing story of love being poured out to these people. And we're going to see that continue. And, and Liz... Uh, We'll, we'll hear updates from, get updates from you as far as uh, the miracles that God does to turn these people to him. Um, now, we talked last week about the turning point, and we're still kind of on that subject, and so we can do that. I, I want to share with you some more things as we continue through chapter 10, and um, we looked at the turning point for Cornelius. Um, Liz and her family are offering a, a turning point for the uh, Native Americans there, the people that they're ministering to, people who have never heard the whole truth of the gospel of Jesus in, in, uh, in, a, in the right way. And, and uh, as you, along with me, we continue to pray for them. We're going to see God do, do something amazing as we pray and continue to stand for their prosperity in, um, in the work of the kingdom. But we look back at uh, Cornelius, and it said in Acts chapter 10, verse 4, that's the last verse that we ended with last week, that his prayers did not go unnoticed. We talked about that just a few moments ago, that our prayers don't go unnoticed. And we're received by God as a memorial or as a soothing aroma as we shared several scriptures last week about that out of the Old Testament, out of Revelation, some scriptures in the New Testament about how this was a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord. In fact, in the tabernacle, there was an article of uh, a piece of furniture that was called the altar of incense. And it was there, and it was before the, um, before the mercy seat, but on the mercy seat was on the other side. The Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat was on the other side of the curtain. 
the veil. And so, but this altar of incense was kept burning all the time. The priests would come in and they would put incense upon that and it would continually go up. And it was a sweet smelling savor to the Lord, but it symbolizes the praises of God's people. And that's what we want to, what, what was happening here. God was receiving the praises. God was receiving the prayers and he was keeping hold of those. And, and uh, as he really um, coveted those, those prayers that, that Cornelius, being a Roman, living in Israel, was offering up, having come to the place where he'd received God and started worshiping the God of the Jews, realizing that he was the true God, away from all of the uh, gods of Rome. And so Captain Cornelius is who he is. I almost said Captain Crunch. Captain Cornelius was was stationed right there at a place called Caesarea. And so being there, it seems like that's the place then where he began to recognize the God of the Bible was the true God and turned away from all the other gods that Rome had worshipped. And this was a courageous step on the part of Cornelius for a couple of reasons. One is that most Jews hated the soldiers. They hated the Romans because they were occupying their land. And, uh, and, and yet he chose to believe in their God. That's a huge step. To believe in the God of those, of people that you're, that, uh, of, of the land that you're occupying as you were put there by your government and for, get them, for ha- to have them accept you is a major miracle because these Jews were not thrilled with you being there and occupying the land. The other thing was the disloyalty to the gods of Rome, which also was a, a, showed a lack of reverence to Caesar, and that could be considered even an act of treason. And so here is Cornelius in this mix But he's coming and he's putting God first and God's taking care of him. He's giving him, uh, he's giving him kind of freedom to move in this arena. And people that are working around him are not pushing back on Cornelius for what he's doing. But some are accepting him on both sides of the fence. And here he is just standing strong in the things of God. We find in Acts 10 that there is more truth that God begins to show Cornelius. But before we go there, I want to share with you something in Matthew chapter 13. So if you'd turn with me to Matthew chapter 13 and go down to verse 10. There's a parable that's there. Something that Jesus said, and it begins to speak of something in particular, the way in which seed is being sown and how the farmers were scattering the seed to do that. We talked about scattering a while ago, right? The word scatter, because that's what happened when the, when the persecution came into, into, um, um, Jerusalem, (laughs) thank you, Uh, came into Jerusalem, the persecution was there and scattered the believers everywhere and it was scattered like seed is what the word actually begins to talk about. So that's how they were getting out there and that seed then was bringing production as it was planted amongst fertile soil and we begin to see some of these things here. So when we go back to Matthew chapter 13, Jesus was telling the parable of the sower and the seed and the four soils that were there. And he, he, he gives them the, these four different scenarios, seed that fell by the wayside on the footpath. Well, it's not going to grow because it's hard ground and, and it's not going to go. The birds can come down, pick it up, and they'll take it away and you know eat it, and that's food for them. The second thing was seed that fell on stony ground. Well, it's not going to grow very much because this, it really can't maintain itself and get its roots down deep because you got all these rocks that are there and the roots can't, can't get firm in the ground and begin to... Uh, produce like they should. The third thing was seed that fell among thorns. 
and those, those thorns, uh, the, the thickness of these weeds and so forth choked out the new found seed and the real fine blades of, of things that would grow up from the, that seed that was scattered there. And then you find the fourth one is what we always look forward to is the seed that's planted on fertile soil. Where in that fertile soil, the seed can go down, be planted deep enough, and the roots begin to grow and get through the soil because it's fertile soil, it's soft enough, the roots can, can grow out and gain all the nutrients that it needs to, and then the, it can begin to produce what, what it's intended for. But look at verse 10, because we see a question that's asked to Jesus by his disciples. His disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? Why do you use parables? Why do you use all these little illustrations and, and uh, you know, say these kinds of things? And he replied to them, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That is why I use these parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they really, they, they don't really listen or understand. God loves us so much that he uses various ways to get through to us. We, can't, we, we don't always learn in the same way as somebody else. Somebody has to be shown 10 times how to do something. Somebody else has to read something for themselves time after time. Somebody else has to be spoken to in a, various, in a certain way or il certain illustrations. Then all of a sudden they say, aha, they get it. In Acts chapter 10, verse 5, we see that Cornelius will learn through Peter. He's going to gain something from Peter. And so starting in verse 5, we're going to read a few verses. It says, now, uh, if you go back to Acts chapter 10, verse 5, it says, now send some men to Joppa. And summon a man named Simon Peter. Who's talking here? The angel, thank you. All right. Somebody went back a verse, good. So, so yeah, here's the angel speaking to Cornelius and saying to him, now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He had no clue who Simon Peter was. But he's gaining information from this angel that showed up. Isn't that amazing? Here's another way that God, that God communicates with people, and sometimes it takes a visitation from a heavenly being so that we'll get it. And he still does those things today. And he still shows us and reveals things to us in various ways. And he's doing that here with, with this Roman captain, living in Israel who worship another God than, that, other than he grew up with. His life was changing moment by moment by moment, and now for that to change even more, he says, call on Peter. Who's Peter? He's staying with Simon, happens to be another Simon, He's staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. I mentioned this a, a week or two ago, that when he's, you know, this guy's living by the seashore, he's a tanner of hides, which was already kind of against the culture of the Jewish people to be around hides like this and dead animals and so forth, and yet he's living with this guy, and, and some would assume that by the shore because the stench of all of that is pretty strong, and so it would help to have the, the wind, you know, the sea, you know, blowing some of that smell away. So that's a possibility. And it says, as soon as the angel was gone, as soon as the angel was gone, why does it take 
us so many times to put into practice what God speaks to us? Why does it take us so long to do something that God asks us to do? We'll speak about it in church and, you know, we'll go on and we'll, you know, and, and you know, you, you, you've heard me say the, the old joke about a pastor who came to church and, and uh, he was a new pastor in his first service there and he got up and he preached a sermon and, you know, because the, you know, the church council, the elders and everybody who selected this individual be there and say, ah, great sermon, pastor, da, da, da. Second week comes along, he preaches the same sermon again. I'm like, that's kind of odd, but okay. Third week comes along, he preaches the same sermon again. They finally go up to him and says, pastor, I, you, know, you know, it's a great sermon and so forth, but when are you going to move on to something else? He says, well, as soon as, as soon as you start doing what I told you to do the first time, then we'll move on. I could probably find about, let's see, I've been here 37 years. That's in, you know, and I've spoken two, three times a week, sometimes four times a week in the past and whatever. There's a lot of sermons out there. For some, I, for some people, I've only needed one. Because we don't always listen to what God's telling us to do. And so we're not going to move forward until we do. What is God speaking to us? Cornelius was like, as soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, a devout soldier, another Roman, to go do something that God told him, the God of the Jews told him to do by a heavenly being who God sent to him. And go find this, Simon, Peter, living by the sea. It says, so sent two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. They still went. He told them what happened and they still went. They didn't call him crazy. They didn't call him out of his mind. They didn't do anything. They just did what he asked them to do. I don't know if the soldier had to. It was kind of like, uh, this is beyond what my duties would be for you. I don't know, but it seems that way. So here is God at work with Cornelius through the angel, revealing Peter to him whom he had never met or heard of. What is the key to living a life that would be pleasing and honorable to God? Well, what is key is that he does what he is told. Cornelius was a great soldier. It tells us that. He was a great soldier. He was a captain. To get to that place, you're going to follow the commands of your superiors. You know what's interesting is that Cornelius swapped out his superiors. He didn't go and physically do anything to Rome and the, and the others that are there, but his loyalties now are to God. It could be at the cost of his life. And he got others to partner with him to do what God had told him to do through the angel. He follows the commands of his superiors. So here we discover that his commander is God. And he follows what he's told by the messenger, the angel. Quick questions. Really kind of uh, redundant questions or questions that don't even need to be asked, rhetorical maybe in a way, but are they? Are you a good soldier? Are we a good soldier? When it comes to following God's word, are we a good soldier? He's given us his word in black and white, are we a good soldier? 
Do we read it? Do we respond to it? Or do we say, well, maybe at another time? And we can go through a litany of things this morning. Because the Word of God tells us to be about certain things. And, and so when we have church and gather together and so forth, you go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And you go to other places of Scripture and we look and see what it says. You know, we find out, are, are we good soldiers? Are we praying? Are we reading the Word? Are we encouraging one another? Are we helping each other? Are we sharing the Word of God with others outside of our circle, the people that don't know Jesus? Are we sharing the Word of God with them as He told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel? Are we doing those kinds of things? Are we giving of ourselves in various ways? Are we worshiping? Did we come in and did we really worship this morning? Or just sit here and you know have a good time listening to some music? We drove in on the parking lot. Did we greet people? Because that's when our worship here on this property starts is when we come in the driveway or walked into the driveway, depending on how your, your mode of transportation was this morning. Are there any camels parked out there? <laughs> um, <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, there's various ways in which we might have come, but when did our worship begin? Did it begin at home when we got up and we started looking forward to what God was going to do in our midst. I'm glad to see so many of you this morning. You're doing it. You're doing what we'd asked you to do. Start bringing friends and neighbors and whatever. You're bringing people and you're coming back yourselves. And as we continue to do that, you know, we, we do that again this next week and this place will be full. We'll have to put in, uh, well, there's not much room to put in more chairs. But wouldn't it be great to have start up our second service again that we used to have? And then maybe a third, which God spoke to me long, long time ago, and we've never gotten to that point except when we had two morning services and a Sunday night service as well. But wouldn't it be amazing if we could do that? What would that show that we're reaching people? And I don't want to grow it up with a bunch of people that, you know, from other churches. If somebody wants to come, that's fine. But you know what? I want to see new believers. I want to see you talking to people up and down your streets and sharing with them the gospel. I mean, Rebecca's here this morning, is here nodding her head. Yeah, we want to tell people about Jesus. And she's a brand new believer in Jesus. And that's Liz's sister-in-law. Did I get that right? Yeah, okay. And, uh, and she came here. And here they are in church together this morning. Worshiping Jesus. They're having a big gathering this afternoon and all of that, but she's here this morning. I guess Will is taking care of everything, but no. No? Okay. We'll throw him under the bus. We'll just say yes. And, um, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just great. Are we doing what the angel told us to do? The angel came to the shepherds and told the shepherds, you know, and joy. To all people, there is born to you in this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Let's go and see this great sight. Let's get on the bandwagon. We believe the angel. And one of the shepherds goes, but what do we do with all the sheep? Can't just leave them here. Which was in one of the plays that we did like 40 years ago. And, and they did. And they got up and they left and they worshiped the Savior as a little baby in a manger, in a little cave. Wow. They did what they were told. How quick are we to do what God asks us to do? Or do we, well, I got to think about it for a while. And that while turns into two weeks and three weeks and six months and four years and, and, and you know what? Um, yeah, well, maybe I just didn't hear from God right. You see, those are things that happen to us and the enemy is instigating this, this part of us that says, I don't want to, he doesn't want us to follow God. And he's doing everything he can for us to put God on the back burner what are we doing to put God on the front? 
And that's, that's what, and, and he, here's Cornelius, a Roman captain who is a transplant into another culture who says, you know what? I believe in this God. And now I believe God has something more for me. So, okay, angel, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. And I'm sending people down there to go get Simon to bring him back. So I can learn more and grow more and, and go the next steps in my relationship with you. Isn't that awesome? Do we run after, after God? We're calling on God like we sang in the song today, rest on us, but sometimes we rest too much. Hesitate, that's a good word. Are you a good soldier? Is there room for growth in your growth to be a better soldier? Is there room for you to grow up and be a better soldier? A guy that goes into the army, you know, doesn't become a great soldier overnight. Yeah, he's signed, he enlisted. Now he's owned by the army and has to do everything they tell him to do. Yeah, I had a friend who was in the army and they did some, some jumping and paratrooping and stuff and he was in the, the uh, um, oh, yeah, airborne and I'm trying to remember the, the category. But nonetheless, he did that and, and anyway, he, they did some night jumping and it was pitch black. He landed in a tree. He didn't know how far off the ground he was. He couldn't see it. So he falls asleep in the tree, hanging. In the morning, commander comes by and taps him on the boot. He wakes up and he finds out he's only like a couple of feet off the ground. But he's just dangling there because there's nothing. He can't feel anything. He can't see anything around him. Yeah. We don't know what to do because darkness veils us. But that's why we are to walk in the light as he's in the light and have fellowship, which brings us fellowship one with another. That's what changes the dynamic around us when we walk with Jesus and see the light of the truth of his word. And then we begin to walk with the Lord in such a way that, you know what? I'm not going to let anything stop my progression in the things of God. He is going to show me the way. I'm going to learn more. And Cornelius wanted to learn more. So Peter, come on, Peter, show me some more. We had seven ladies on the, uh, several ladies. Um, how many were on the one, two, three, four, five? Six, I think six ladies yesterday on our prayer call. Sorry to say, I was the only man. I've been calling after you guys to get on the prayer call. It's a Zoom call for one hour from eight to nine o'clock in the morning every Saturday. And you know what? And thank you, one of our newest ladies in the church. She joined us yesterday. She got the link. She didn't even know we had it. Joined the link and she got on there yesterday. And so thank you. Her last name is Jester, but she's not a clown. And um, we are just so thankful for you being with us, Cindy. You're, you're a blessing to the church. You're a blessing to us. And you're a prayer warrior. We know that. So thank you for being and partnering with all of our other ladies that have been on there. And uh, we're just so glad for that. You had a wonderful time yesterday. I kind of just sat in the background and listened to these ladies pray. And I, fi I finally prayed at the, at the end. But I was really thanking God for the things that were sent up, prayers and who are those prayers for? You. Your families. All of you. That's what those prayers were about. And what God would do in our midst today, that, that we would hear the things that God would give to us, and we would then just fall in love with Jesus more. We would walk in the power of his spirit more, and we would just develop more and more as believers in Jesus. And we heard these prayers going forth through all these uh, Elizabeth and Esther and Patricia and Shirley um, up in Palmdale, and uh, she doesn't get here every week, but she comes when she can. And and my wife, that's the six, and uh, and just amazing. 
And I'm just there in tears, just thanking God for what he was, what these ladies were doing, spiritual warfare on your behalf, behalf of your families and everything that goes on around you for our worship. We've been doing this ever since a Saturday morning prayer gathering ever since Did we start the end of 1986 before the new year started or in 87? In 87, 1987. 36 years we've been doing prayer, even if only one person shows up, even if I was by myself. I learned a lesson once because I was late and only one other person showed up, but I was late. I said, uh, Paul be the only one who comes. And so I meandered. Just before then, our door got broken into over here. They came up and took two electric guitars. I said, God, I'll never procrastinate again. And we'll continue to have somebody there on time for everything that we do and start prayer. And so we've been doing prayer on Saturday mornings ever since then. During COVID, we went to 9 o'clock. Now we're back to 8 o'clock. Some still want it at 9, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> Elizabeth, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I did, but anyway, she loves me, and so, um, man, this is what God does, and they pray, and God answers, they prayed his heart, and this is what Cornelius was doing, was praying the heart of God, he tuned into God, and God revealed more to him through Peter, But God also had to do the same thing with Peter. God had to do some work in Peter. So he's turning Cornelius' heart to get more of him and he's needing Peter to do so. But in order for Peter to actually tell him what he needs to know, Peter's got to get with the program. He's got to come to a greater understanding. So in Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 23, it says the next day as Cornelius messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray it was about noon. Joppa was 32 miles away from where Cornelius was in Caesarea. Probably around a 16-hour walk. That'd be two miles an hour over the terrain that they had to go on. So that's probably a, a decent look at it. But rooftops were commonly used as places of relaxation, places where they could pray, places that they could be, be in, in private. And so here we find Peter praying, communicating with God on the rooftop. And what is he doing? He's tuned in. He's hearing what God has to say and he's communicating with God. Verse 10, it says, and he was hungry. So reality sets in, right? I'm going up to pray, but I'm, I am hungry. And so, about, so there's a meal being prepared down below him. The smells are probably rising to the rooftop and making him hungry and like, you know, I, wa I want to have some of that food at some point. And he fell into a trance. Now, this isn't some weird kind of a trance. Here we're told Peter was, was hungry and, and all of that. But, the, but isn't it just like God to use something that is happening around us to give us a revelation? Jesus did that constantly while he was preaching to people and sharing things with people. Just think of the Sermon on the Mount and, and where they were and Jesus spoke to various things. I can imagine him pointing, city on a hill that cannot be hid and pointing in the direction of, of Nazareth or some other city that's up on a hill, you know, and, and you know, you can't hide it under a bushel and all these kinds of things. And you begin to think of these kinds of things and when you're over there in Israel, you can look around and say, oh, now I understand why Jesus said this. Because this is the place where he said it, and you look around and say, oh, well, this is what's happening around him. We use those kinds of things with our kids all the time. We share little situations when we're going down the street and we're, you know, looking at somebody and, and you know, looking at the things happening around us, kids walking on their way to school and all of those kinds of things. And we use those illustrations to teach our children something. 
But God uses different things around us to bring us revelation. And it says, Peter fell into a trance, and as he was praying and waiting for the meal, the, the power of the Holy Spirit moved upon him. The Greek word used for trance is existimi, or existimi. And, and so um, it has to do, and it, uh, the, the word we get from that as well in English is ecstasy. But it means this, to throw out of position or displace. It means to amaze or to astonish, to throw into wonderment, to be amazed or astounded. Those are the words that you gain from this. And so the same word is used when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water. What? Who, what is that? It's a ghost, something. What's happening out there? And so their amazement is there. And then Jesus comes up to them and calls out to them, right? And so all of a sudden, these things happen. So the same word is used. And the Spirit-Filled Life Bible says this, displacing the individual's ordinary state of mind with an elevated, God-given state for the purpose of instructing him. This is in line with the prophetic promise of dreams and visions that we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, and Joel chapter 2, verse 28, when it's, it says there, and in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Men and women will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions, right? So that's the same verse used in both those occasions. And so these dreams, Dreams, the prophetic promise of dreams and visions were given by the Holy Spirit to advance God's redemptive purpose. So these are spiritual gifts that you and I are to remain open to. Sometimes when praying by yourself or for someone or a situation, God may give you a picture, a vision that will bring clarity to the message that God is conveying. It may be one word that you hear, and then you share that with someone. And when you share that with someone, it doesn't mean anything to you, but it means something to them. And you ask them, Does, hey, I, I'm getting this word in my, my head, or I'm seeing this picture. What does that mean to you? And all of a sudden, something breaks in them, and they begin to say, oh, God is speaking to me, and this is what he's saying, and it, that's a word that's confirming what I've been thinking about and what God has been sharing with me or what I thought God was sharing with me. comes to a place where it's significant in a person's life, and that person begins to understand with more clarity. So now we see when Peter saw, oh, what we, we now we, as we read what Peter saw in this vision, it brings more clarity, and he saw the sky open. I'm going to end here because there's too much to tell. Thank you, Jonathan. But I think you got the, the point of the message. Do we respond to what God's word says? And are we seeing clearly what God is saying? And will we do something about it? Will we do something about it? What has God been speaking to you? What has God been sharing with you? How open are you to allow God to speak to you something fresh and new? And that you move and do what he's asked of you. It may not be an angel. But maybe that angelic person that's sitting next to you this morning. Or that friend of yours that you talked to on the phone this week. And you might get upset because I don't want to hear that. That's something I, I really don't want to step into that. But God's saying, hey, this is for you. And God wants to do something amazing in your life. And Cornelius was open to growth. Next week, we'll talk more about what happened. And we see what happened when Peter shows up and what, when he begins to talk. But first, Peter had to get through some things. So go ahead and read ahead. Go ahead and read about the sheet coming down with, with, uh, with animals in it that the Jews weren't supposed to eat. They weren't to be a part of their, their dietary needs. 
But God says, kill and eat. He says, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything considered unclean. But God says something else. And it wasn't just in reference to the food. The food was the item that God used, that God used to, to speak to him about how will we be open to other people around us? How will we be open to the Native Americans around us? How will we be open to the Asians that live down the street or the other people that live down the street and their culture is quite different and they speak a different language and I don't know all about them and I don't know about this person, that person. How will we be open to the the people all across uh, Minica and Europe? Will we respond to them in a way that, that we would really say, love God and love people? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love others as yourself? That's what that's all about, to love God, love people. And will we be people at LifeGate that will actually live that out? Because that's what God is saying to Peter. And he's got to change Peter's heart in some areas and not be so tied up with his own Jewish traditions and Jewish ways that he can't enter the house of a Gentile who has a different culture than him, but he's going to enter into that house and and God's going to break the heavens loose. People there are going to start speaking in tongues, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then Peter gets the thing and says, well, if they've already been baptized with the Holy Spirit, hey, we can't stop there. We, we We got to allow them to be baptized in water. So they start dunking people in the name of Jesus Christ as these people are different from them and have a different way about them. And now they're going to turn and by being baptized, they're declaring to everybody around them, I've given my life to Jesus and I'm following the ways of God. I'm following the ways of Jesus Christ whom the Jews crucified a long way away from the gods of the Romans And he's saying, it doesn't matter. Jesus is the Lord of my life. And I'm going to serve him. Whatever comes against me, I'm going to put God first. I'm going to put Jesus first. And if the Romans want to hang me, then fine. If the Jews want to hang me, fine. But Jesus is my Lord and I'm going to serve him. Come on, people. Will we serve Jesus? every day of our life. Come on, let's stand together. If you have a need this morning, and want you just right now just walk down the front of the altar. We'll pray for you down here. If you want to give your life to Jesus and you're saying, hey, I want to get my life right with God. I want to do, do more of what God wants me to do. I don't want to be like, like, uh, like some people and just kind of wait and wait and wait and wait and never end up doing what God has asked you to do. But you say, you know what? There's things God's been asking me to do and I want to get it right. And I'm going to come down here just by walking down the aisle you're saying to God, Lord, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And if that's you this morning, you just say, you know what? I don't want to wait any longer. I just want to do what God tells me to do. Then come on down the, the front. Just make a step. Just, just do it. Step out in the aisle. Do something. Turn around to a neighbor and just, say, just give him a high five. I'm going, to, I'm going to do what Jesus asked me to do. I'm going to walk in his ways. So let's just do that this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus, we bring ourselves before you today, Lord God. We lift our hands to you and say, God, I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender all. We give our lives to you, Lord. We're not going to take steps backwards, but we're going to move forward. We're going to hear what your word declares. We're going to hear what you declare to us through your word and through the preaching of your word and through the things that we we go through in life and different things that you show us, how you bring revelation into our hearts and lives. Jesus, we're going to take those things and we're going to walk into the things that your word will share with us. And as there's things out there, your word will back up everything that's true and everything that's right. So we take everything back to your word, Lord Jesus, so that we'll always make the right moves and do what you ask us to do. We separate our hearts to you this morning, Lord. We separate ourselves to you to do what you've asked us to do, to be the people that you've called us to be. And Jesus, that we would just simply surrender all to Jesus.
All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. Jesus, we serve you, Jesus. In his presence, daily live. In his presence, daily live. I surrender all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, pour your spirit over, our, over each person here, Lord, every, each family. Give us the voice to share the word of truth with other people that they may come to know who Jesus is. Thank you, Lord God, what you've done in individuals' lives here in this place. Thank you, Lord, from where they were in, in their life. But, God, they've been transformed because they've got the truth of your word. And they're reading your word and they're studying your word and they're listening to you and they're praying and seeking your face. And, God, you're doing something amazing in their lives. So I thank you, Jesus, for doing that today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Let's sing a, that closing song together that you were playing, Richard. Hallelujah. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Everybody sing it together. And, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here is where I lay it down. Every bird and every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every down. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. You know, you have the communion, turn the lights up just a little bit so I can see people. A little bit more. There we go. You have the communion. Uh, anybody not have it that you'd like? Some, uh, a communion. Anybody not have it and you'd like to participate in communion this morning, receiving that together? Go ahead and pull the piece of bread out. We know how much Jesus did for us. We know that he went to the cross for us. His body was given for us, broken for us, for our healing, for the things we face in our daily life. He gave all this to us. He gave himself, himself for us. And so here we're receiving of this. And you know, um, as we are receiving this, in light of what we've been sharing this morning and reading out of his word that we're just saying Jesus I will make room for you I'm setting my life apart unto you 
in a greater way than ever before. I'm going to run to you and not away. I'm going to serve you, serve with you, and declare your goodness and your grace to other individuals that need to know the truth of your word. And as I receive of all that you did for me by giving of your body, dying upon the cross for me, shedding your blood for the forgiveness of my sin, Lord, I realize that other individuals, you've placed in my path so that they could hear the truth of the gospel through my voice, through my adoration of you, and they would turn their hearts to you. To many, you've called us to be like Peter that would go to them and tell them the truth. So Jesus, may we not run from that opportunity, but grab a hold of that opportunity, knowing that you are going to bring victory into the lives that we touch for your glory, for your kingdom, in Jesus' name. Let's eat together. Amen. Would you just take a moment and just thank the Lord for the forgiveness of your sin, that he bore all that upon the cross, and he gave his total life for you so that you could have life forevermore. That's the promise he gave to us, that we would have, as our sins would be forgiven, that we would have our eternal home with him forever and ever with Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you paid the price for us and that one day we will rule and reign with you. But until then, Lord, we're going to serve you and walk with you every day. We love you, Lord. And in honor of you, we receive this cup today. In the name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, and our God. Amen. Let's drink together. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Yeah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Shake up the ground of all our tradition, break down the walls. Of all my religion, your way is better. Come on, sing that out with confidence this morning. Your way is better. Shake the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Break up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Break down the walls of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. And I will make room. For you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Lord, as we go our various ways, we know that you will not depart from us. 
May we keep you on our thoughts, our minds. May we see the things you want us to see and then approach them with your love and your grace. We give you praise and thanks, God, for how we can come into this place and receive from you and we go out the life gate to give your life away to others. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you.